Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available for you to watch later at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think would be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Um, as the state agency for libraries here in Nebraska, we have um, we provide we provide services and training and resources and databases and grants what we're talking about today to all types of libraries in the state. So you'll find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, anything else. <laughs> um, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, um, demos of services, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we bring in guest speakers to talk at Encompass Live sometimes about things they're doing from all across the country, but we also do sessions with um, Library Commission staff about um, resources and programs and things we do here through the Library Commission, and that's what we're doing today. Today we are talking about the Library Commission grants for 2025. Um, and you can see here, this is we're, we're going to start off here on our um, Library Commission homepage, and so we can show you how to get to all of these um, if you do come to the homepage. Um, but links, direct links are sent out when we do open up, um, we used to send out emails and whatnot. Um, but joining me today is um, two other staff from here. Um, we do our grants through um, the Library Development Department here at the Library Commission. Um, and myself, uh, Holly Duggan and Sally Snyder are all in the Library Development. I'm the Library Development Director. Um, Sally, Coordinator of Children's and Youth Services. All right. And Holly is our CE Coordinator. Uh, good morning, Sally and Holly. Good to see you. Hey. Um, and we're going to be talking about all the grants that we have available in um, coming up for 2025. It's it's already 2025. It seems like a crazy thing to say, but <laughs> it's officially fall at least now. It is. It's officially fall. It doesn't feel like fall, but that's okay here at least. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Um, so you can see we did announce on uh, September 20th is when our grants did go live and open for applications. Um, this was pushed out. This is on our um, Library Commission blog. And just push out through all of our various social media, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Um, so they did a go live last Friday. So you can apply for all of our grants. We are doing them all on the same schedule. Um, in years past, we had uh, different grants were due at different times, but now we've um, we started doing this a year or two ago, doing them all on the same schedule. So that just makes it a little easier for everyone. All grants became, went live on. We're open for applications on Friday, September 20th, and they are all due November 15th. That's the due date for all of our grant, all of our, all four of our grants. Um, and we are going to go into details about all of them um, today. So I'm just showing you here the uh, blog post from when we um, announced it. And we do have links here that go directly to our grants webpage and to each of the specific grants themselves. Each grant does have its own website as well. But if you start off on our Library Commission homepage, over here on the left, we have a whole a big menu with all these little flyouts here. And one of them is grants. And this is a lot of different information about all sorts of different grants and funding that you can receive um, for your library, things that we offer through the commission or things that we just share that um, might be of use to you. Um, E-rate is um, not a grant program, but it is a funding source. Uh, funding that we provide to libraries, state aid, lender compensation dollars for data. So this is just a kind of a catch-all place for anything that you could get um, funding in all sorts of various ways for your library, depending on what it is. 
Um, you can look up and see who has received a grant in the past. Um, we have a funding recipient, funding recipients database. So you'll see um, just basically the library, how much they received and um, a general like one or two sentence about what the grant was for, not the full grant application or anything. So we do track all of that here. If you wanna go see if your library has received something before or um, maybe get ideas about what kinds of things we have funded before, what kinds of programs and um, uh, services and, and equipment and whatnot, you can um, check that out there. Um, I'll just click on the top one here. And what it does is just brings you into our database um, where you can look up each grant that you want to see what has been received in the past. And we tell you over here what is actually included in here. So this is our, our basic grants we offer through the Library Commission, as well as some other grants that we have received. Um, the, the two grants that happened due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the um, American Rescue Plan Act grants, ARPA, and the CARES Act grants in 2020. So all of those are also here as well. Um, you can choose which grant you want to look up choose a particular year if you want to. Um, you can search by library name or um, just city if you're not sure what is the library's name. It's not always named after the city. <laughs> um, and you don't have to choose all of these. You can just say, I'm just gonna choose the top one. What kind of grants has Ainsworth received over the years? And then you can see everything that they have received from us. You can also download these into, I think it's a pretty little spreadsheet. If this is something you need or want for your own um, reference. Yo. All right. So over here, we also have links directly to each of the grant pages. Um, we still have links to the um, CARES Act grant that we did in the past, ARPA, just for information, and books to get, um, kids learning. These are just previous things that we have offered. If you go to them, you'll see it will say these are no longer available. But the four grants that we do regularly, um, oh, and also innovation students are listed here, continuing education grants, internship grants, library improvement grants, and youth grants for excellence. Those are the four that we're going to talk about today. Those are our four grants that we usually offer every year. Um, there have been some years when we have, only, we have not had enough funding to offer all four, so over the time you will see there'll be some years that don't have um, anyone receiving it, um, but the last few years we've been able to um, uh, have enough funding for all of them. Um, so you can go directly to each grants page if you want to from here or oops, this about NLC grants page link at the top brings you to a starting page for all four of them. Um, you'll notice here there's a new grant added as well. <laughs> um, uh, there is this uh, Fern V. Heim Library Trustee Scholarship. Um, Holly, do you want to talk a little bit about that one? It's closed at the moment, but since you're seeing it here, yeah. you can just explain a little bit what it is, because it will be available next year, that's correct? Um, actually, okay. So about the scholarship is, it is intended for current public library board members, um, board members only, mm -hmm. uh, to attend NLA. Um, this year we also open for ARSL. Um, and registration for NLA is actually still open. So if there are any board members that you know that might be interested, have them contact us. Um, mm -hmm. But that's pretty the short of it. Um, yeah. It's really, it's similar to the other applications that we're gonna go through. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is just it, something special that we were reached um, out the, the um, Bernheim yeah. Foundation, or they reached out through, we do it in conjunction with the Nebraska Library Association, um, but it's to attend either the NLA conference or ARSL. Um, ARSL already happened, so that one we've already attended, um, but um, NLA is next month. Yep. So um, we'll, we'll call this deadline, again, I guess then a soft deadline, since yep. if you want to, you know, just, just ask if you have a board member who might want to attend NLA, and they still are um, thinking about it, you can um, still reach out to Holly and see about getting some of this funding. Um, and yep. this will be an ongoing grant. Ideally, every year we will be offering it to attend those conferences. But just be clear, it's specifically, it's called the Library Trustee Scholarship. It is only for your library board members, not for your library staff. Yes. 
All right, so, so that's just a little bit about that one. But what we're gonna talk about more today is our other grants that we have. Um, if you have library staff that want to attend things, that would be CE grants. Um, we have our and you can see grants, um, our internship grants, our library improvement grants, and our youth grants for excellence. Um, and as I said, they're all on the same schedule. All went live um, on Friday, all due November 15th, and you will all be notified at the latest by the end of the year, December 31st. Um, most usually get the um, everything figured out before then, um, but that's just our end date um, for notifying you. Um, and all of these grants would be for things that you were doing in 2025. That's why they're called the 2025 grants. Um, so let's just start, let's just go from um, the top here and go into the CE and training grants. Holly, we'll just start with you. We'll just go from top sure. to bottom, if that's cool. Um, so CE, obviously, and training grants. Um, these are open again. Some years we focus on a particular conference or workshop right. or something, but um, for this year, again, we're just opening it to really any conferences or courses or training projects that you might have. Um, this, the goal is for librarians, staff members, and library board members can apply for this one too, um, to get more skills, get more knowledge, to help their communities better. Um, so for this round, we usually have two CE grant rounds, one mm -hmm. open now, and then we'll have another round in the spring. For this round, it will need to be any conferences or classes that are done before June 2025. Um, and this is a little different than we've done it in past years, but it needs to be done before June 2025. And then the paperwork um, will need to be done by June 13th. And that's because this is a reimbursement grant. So you'll attend the conference, you'll attend the class, um, and then um, we'll reimburse you the grant funds. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go through this page, you can see sort of the three different options. Um, so for the online learning, this is any online class. Um, you can take through some of the examples are Library Juice, ALA, or any of its divisions, or you can take any other online class as long as it's not for credit college. So these grants aren't for your college classes, um, but any continuing education class, um, as long as in the application, you can say like, so for a grant workshop, if it's not through ALA, you can in your application sort of justify why you need this class. It would help your library, it would help your community by getting more grants and learning how to write them, things like that. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a library organization class like Library Juice or ALA. Um, it could be like a management class or mm -hmm. leadership or really, um, it's really open. Um, and if you have any questions about whether a class would be eligible or not, just um, reach out before you apply and I can let you know for sure. Yeah, think uh, outside the box, definitely. The only ones, again, that don't count are the um, four college classes or any of the, um, like the NLA or the systems workshops. Um, so we're trying to trying to help you do things that maybe you wouldn't have an opportunity um, to do um, and look for some of those other continuing education opportunities. Um, and again, like all these grants, um, or this one, as an applicant, you need to be employed in the accredited Nebraska Public Library or one of the state-run institutional libraries um, or be a current board member um, and that's really the only requirements yeah and that's something we'll mention to here too that i'll just mention that for all of our grants this is a requirement being in a you must be from an accredited um nebraska public library or a state-run institutional library um so that goes for all of them that we have yep and then conferences and workshops are again really similar you can apply to attend um, either in person or virtual to a, um, a workshop or a conference. Um, the only ones that aren't 
eligible again are the NLA or one of the library conferences in state. Um, your costs that can be covered are registration, travel, meals, lodging, pre-conferences. Um, it just doesn't count maybe some of the social or networking events. But again, if you have questions, what counts, let me know before you apply. Otherwise, um, obviously we'll look at your application. Um, and again, it needs to be sponsored by a professional library organization or association, um, or in your application, you need to be able to justify why this conference specifically will help you as a library professional um, and how it will help your library service to your community. Um, and then the same requirements. So then for this and the online courses, since it's a reimbursement, um, the commission isn't responsible for signing you up or any of your travel you'll register for conference or the class you'll attend um, and then if it's a class you'll send me the completion certificate showing that you finished the class and then the receipts and the reimbursement papers and then we'll reimburse you the funds this year the only exception or the exception is ala and pla are right at the end of june into mm -hmm. july 1st so if you're planning on applying for those, you can. Um, we'll just have to do the paperwork a little before you attend. So it'll be just a little bit different and will require a little more of you. But just contact me or when you apply, I will reach out to you and let you know exactly what you will need to do. But yeah. just to let you know that you can apply for ALA and PLA in this room. Yeah, and the reason for this is this is how our fiscal year works here at the commission. Um, at the end of June is the end of our fiscal year, so the all of these things you're doing in the beginning of the year come out of this year, and then the after June come out of next year's budget. Um, and ALA always likes to be right there on the edge and make it difficult for us <laughs> that people attend it right when the year's ending and doing reimbursement. It's where's the money coming from? It's a whole thing. So um, yeah. for ALA, it may be a um, giving you the funding ahead of time and uh, if you and making sure that you attend if for something some you know last minute urgent thing some, something happens that you can't attend then you would just return the funding to us if you were unable right. to attend ALA like for you know there's a last minute um, emergency or something happens um, you just you know send it, send the funding back so, yeah. but we want to help us get people there, but we're trying to figure out the best way to do it. And this is the way we kind of figure out how to at least make it happen for that. They just keep having their conference and just the way it falls. <laughs> and no one wants to do paperwork at a conference, so. No. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, very important that you, we do not register you for any of these things. You have to do that yourself. We just give you the funding to attend and then you're on your own to, for registering, making sure you get signed up, making sure you make all your travel arrangements. We don't do any of that for you. Um, we just give you the fund. We just reimburse you for whatever you um, did attend. Right. Um, and then the last section is um, for bigger CE and training projects. So these are really intended to be um, public library staff trainings um, that you can partner with other organizations in your community, um, like or the regional library systems or um, like the library association or different state institutions. Um, you can see some of the examples of the previous projects like the ALA road trip or the in-service days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is the, let's see. So in the training, library board members, staff, volunteers, any other supporters can be involved in the training. It just needs to be hosted at the public library. Um, and then these grants are the only CE grants that do require the match of the 25% of the amount requested. Um, these training grants are intended for the projects. They're not intended to be um, individual registration. So if you have a group of staff members who all want to attend ARSL, this is not intended to be like their individual registrations. 
if that makes sense. This is for mm -hmm. those bigger kind of staff training projects yeah. in the library or in the community. Um, and otherwise, I think that's all. Yeah. Um, again, so yeah, y'all look the forms are down here for each of them. Um, so there's the two, the first grant application, that one's for individuals. So those of you um, applying to attend an, a learning class or a conference, you'll fill out that first application. Um, it's pretty short, just your information and then just a brief description of why you want to attend this class, this conference, how it'll help you, how it'll benefit your library and your community, and then fill out the expenses. Um, with expenses, so for example, for ALA, they don't have their registration out last I looked. Um, mm -hmm. You can look at past years to um, estimate like registration costs. Um, or you can look at maybe a similar conference. Again, if you have any questions, let me know and I can help look and see what I can find. Um, and then the meals are all now um, reimbursed at per diem rate. So that's a little different than it's been maybe in past years that you've applied. Um, and then in addition, we need um, the support form. So this is just, um, fill this out this is just signed by either your library director or your your board president if you're the director um saying that yes we're aware that this person is applying for this grant and we will do what we can to support their efforts mm -hmm. um Oops. yeah and then so back on that page then that second application is for um the bigger CE and training projects, it's a little more involved, asking what the training goals are, the descriptions, um, just because again, these are meant to be bigger CE projects. Mm -hmm. And then the budget at the bottom, and then your local match and information. Go, oh, <laughs> And then that last link again is just um, is the support form for the CE project saying again that we know this project is being applied for and we have the support of the library or the board to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So any questions? All right. Sure. All right. That is our CE and training grants. Anybody have any questions about the continuing education training grants? Anybody want to know more about them or have any ideas for what they might do with those? Yeah. Otherwise, just email me. Um, I'm going to, so since I want to bring out, um, let's see here. Here, home page. Um, the C grants, as as Sally mentioned, uh, for the conferences and workshops, you know, you notice that it says cannot be for things offered basically in state. The idea is get out of the state, go somewhere else, <laughs> and we will help you do that. You know, this is all not anything you know NLA, NSLA, anything we do, or the commission or this regional systems. But what I do want to bring your attention to is I do have here um, other funding sources, grant opportunities for Nebraska libraries. This is a page that I maintain and I add things to it regularly. I have a few I need to add the next day or two, actually. So you'll see, you're going to see this update in just a little bit. But um, our regional library systems also have scholarship grants, all four of them. And these can be used for in-state. So if you do want need funding to attend NLA or um, anything else that must might cost, um, um, I would highly recommend re applying for each one of these, depending on which system that you are in, Central Plains, Southeast, Three Rivers, Western. They all have CE scholarships. They all can be used to attend um, both in-state and out-of-state things. So I would recommend, uh, so we tell you, go over there if you want to, um, if you need funding for that. Um, and then there's also just a whole bunch of other resources here for funds. I'm not going to go into deep details about any of this, um, but take a look at this. There's a lot of things for capital projects. So if you're talking about construction, um, renovating your library um, or programs or getting books, um, and this is not every the only things that are available. This is just a few things that I've pulled out that I, I know libraries have applied for before and been successful with. 
um, that we know might be um, very useful to you. Um, and then we have a link to all the ALA grants that are available, um, other grant resources. There's just lots and lots of things that you can um, apply for to get funding for your library for all sorts of things. But I wanted to make sure you're aware of this since our CE grants are not for in-state. These from the commit systems you could use instead. All right, I don't see any questions. I'm gonna pop back to our grants page here. And um, the next two grants are the grants that I maintain, that I run, our internship grants and our library improvement grants. Um, internship grants, this is funding that we can provide to your library to pay someone to um, work at your library for a limited amount of time. Um, so the general idea is to get someone who is a student, either a high school or college student, involved, interested in becoming a librarian or a library worker, possibly. Um, and we, we have had that happen in the past. We have had um, reports back from some libraries that someone did decide to then go on to library school or to stay working at the library as a permanent employee after doing an internship. So that's great, yay. Um, but we know sometimes it's just summer job for someone as well, and that's perfectly fine. Um, these grants are for either $500 or $1,000, depending on how much you want, um, how, um, how many hours you need someone, someone to work. Um, you can have one or two interns. So if you did do a $1,000 grant, you could give $500 to one and $500 to the other one. Um, these are for public libraries only. So this one, eligible applicants are just our accredited public libraries here in Nebraska. Um, and there is an online application form for this as well. Uh, let's see here. I need to open this. The grant funding is for to pay the intern wages and possibly to do withholdings such as um, FICA or any taxes if you hire them as an actual employee. Um, you have the option of doing it either as a stipend where you just give them the funding, give them the grant, give them the money, and then they deal with if they have to pay any taxes on it or not, or you can hire them as a temporary part-time employee, and then you or city would do its usual, your city municipality would do its usual withholding of taxes just like they do for any other employee. That's up to you which way um, your city wants to do that. Um, we have a lot of resources here on doing internships. Um, I did a session a few years ago about tips and tricks for internship success. Still good. You can watch that webinar if you want to. Um, there is also from the Nebraska Department of Economic Development has a guidebook to developing a successful internship program. So this isn't specific to libraries. This is just internships in general. So um, you can definitely take a look at that um, just to get some, you know, more <clears throat> in-depth information about how to do this internship. I've never done that before. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I do have some samples, um, orientation plan, timeline, and scheduled activities that you can use. So these are just give you an idea of the kind of things that um, the schedule you might do things in. Um, advertising the position, um, interviewing your applicants, and the things that they might do every week. Now this this, this uh, timeline here is introducing them to everything in the library, and that might be a lot for you. You don't have to have an intern learn every single thing about the library. Um, it's up to you what you need them for. Sometimes it is, we're gonna show them a little bit of everything and get them a taste of it. Um, sometimes it's, I just need someone to help with summer reading, and that's fine. <laughs> um, we'll explain that in your application about how what you're going to use them. Um, for. Um, as I said, accredited public libraries. Um, you can partner with other libraries. You can have other types of libraries or organizations partnership with you. We do encourage that for all these grants. The main applicant has to be an accredited public library, but you can say we're doing this in conjunction with the school and they're going to work part sometimes at the public library, sometimes in the school library. Or uh, they might do a field trip off to the local college library to see what it's like working in a university or college library for a day. Um, that is great. We definitely want to uh, give them a picture of all types of libraries. Um, but the public, the main applicant has to be one of our accredited public libraries. Um, they could be either a high school or college student, um, but they cannot have been employed by a library before as a staff person. So this is just new people to the library. But you can have a, if you have a previous intern, um, if they've been an intern before, they can intern for you again. That is allowed. Um, and volunteers. Well, if you have volunteers that want to now become an intern and get a little paid for what they do, that's perfectly fine as well. They just could not have ever been a previous employee of a library. 
Um, as far as the paying them goes for, um, if you're doing it as a stipend where you just give them the money and then they um, just take it and handle their taxes themselves, you must pay minimum wage to them. Um, um, if I uh, hope everyone's aware, we do have the new statutes it, statute in Nebraska where minimum wage is increasing every year in January. Um, so as of January 2025, and if this will be in 2025, we'll be paying this in turn, uh, minimum wage is now going to be up to $13.50. And over the next few years, it works its way up to $15 an hour. So um, you will have to pay them a minimum of minimum wage. Um, there is a, if you're a part-time employee, there is a student training wage that you could pay as well um, for up to 90 days. So you could pay them just $10.13 an hour um, for up to 90 days. After that, if they work longer than 90 days, then you've got to bump it up to the full $13.50. Um, but we do really encourage you to try and do minimum wage. Uh, if you do not pay minimum wage, you're possibly going to have trouble getting or keeping an intern because they will find jobs elsewhere that will pay minimum wage. Um, and if it's not you, they're just going to go somewhere else. Um, if you choose to hire them as a um, part-time temporary employee, then you would deal with um, you know paying them what you would pay you pay your usual employees and how, you know doing all their uh, taxes and whatnot, just like any other employee. Um, you can be possibly be hiring high school students. There are specific rules for um, hiring minors. Um, anyone who is 14 or 15 years old um, have certain hours they're allowed to work. Um, anything under, basically it's under the age of 16, um, certain number of hours, certain hours of the day that they are allowed to work. So do be aware of that. And you do need to get a employment certificate from the school. Um, and there's a link here to that at the Nebraska Department of Labor. So if you're hiring anyone who is that young, you will have to go through that. Um, and then there's some basic information about here, what, about what you will do as the internship, um, what the intern will do, um, and then there's the application form. Um, the application form here, um, and you can, um, is, there's some basic information about your library, how much funding do you want, how many interns do you tend to have, and then just some basics about what you're planning to do, um, how you're going to use them, what you need them for. So give a lot of good information here. Um, we need some good details about why you need this intern specifically. Um, and then you just save and submit the application. There's no extra documentation you need to submit to me. I'm like the CE grants are those special extra, um, you know, support documents because this is coming from you at the library um, you just submit this all online um, if you after you've been selected to receive the internship grant then i send you a follow-up document that are the instructions um, with uh, there's a bunch of survey there's surveys online that you would submit about um, before the app the grant starts before the intern starts their work they submit a pre um, survey basically kind of things like what do you know about libraries anything and then at the end they do a second one saying okay what did you learn about libraries um, and then as the intern supervisor you have one where you have to uh, submit a report about how the grant itself went as well um, we do have a specific page of previous grant winners here for internships uh, just libraries this is something that's been maintained over the years so if you're wondering um, how I would do this, I'm not sure about an intern. Um, these are all other libraries who have received these grants. You can definitely reach out to them and ask for advice and tips or anything if you want to. I'm sure they'd be happy to share what they've done at their um, libraries before. And we've got these going back quite a few years here. I think that's everything about internship grants. Any questions about interns or internship grants? Paying them, hiring them. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. If you do have any questions, call me, email me, and I will uh, answer them for you. All right, the next grant we have is our library improvement grants. And this one is um, different from the other three grants. There are other three grants, the CE and training grants, the internship and youth grants all come from state funding, um, come from our um, budget funding that we see from the state of Nebraska. Library improvement grants, these are our federal grants. So these are funded by the um, Institute of Museum and Library Services through the Library Services and Technology Act. So this is LSTA funding. 
So uh, these are federal grants that we um, we receive the funding and then we do sub grants to you all to the libraries. Um, so for these grants, it is a little more in depth and there's a little more to it. Um, you do have to match up whatever you're going to do as a project with the LSTA purposes, um, access to facilitating access to resources, resource sharing, promoting literacy, education, lifelong learning, um, ensuring the preservation of knowledge in library collections, and promoting library services. So you'll have to you know, figure out what is what we're doing, how does it match up with any of these um, LSTA purposes. And when you do the grant application, it has these choices, so it's all in there for you. Um, this one is also, you must be an accredited Nebraska Public Library or an identified institutional library, and we do have a um, list of who those are that would be um, eligible for um, the grant who's state-run institutions. Um, uh, with the link to the subgrant. Um, oh, somebody's saying this grant is this link isn't working. Um, um, this is working here for me. I'm not sure what if you were having some issues. Yeah, there is this manual here that has details about how our subgrants work, um, the policies and procedures. So um, you can look at that if you want more details. Um, if you're having trouble accessing that, let me know and I can send you a direct link. Um, Um, here's all of our deadlines for um, this grant. You do have to do, um, there's a certain timing of when you have to do um, your, have your purchases made by. This is all because of the LSTA federal funding timeline. Um, so since the grants opened on September 20th, anything you purchase after September 20th is eligible. So if there's something you had to buy right away, you could definitely purchase something this year and then get reimbursed for it when we do get the fund. If, if you do get awarded, just understand you aren't guaranteed to get in a full award or a full grant award as well. But you have until August 15th of 2025 to request your funding and it all must be spent by September 30th, 2025. So there are those specific deadlines um, in the federal calendar. And then there will be a completion report that you'll submit online um, by November 1st, 2025. So right now here in 2024, our grantees that have received grants for 2024 are hopefully working on this. I'm getting a final invoices and paperwork and people are doing their completion reports now. Uh, there are certain things due to the federal rules that are not eligible for this um, LSTA funding, food and beverages, um, nothing food related, sales tax. Public libraries do not pay sales tax. You should not be paying sales tax for anything at all, ever. Um, as a government entity, as a um, department of your municipality, you are not do not have to pay sales tax. So um, if, uh, please don't do that ever. If you do send receipts to me that do have sales tax on them, they are not included in the reimbursement costs that will be fund, you know, giving funding to you. So if you're trying to send me invoice saying, here, we spent all our grant funding, sales tax will be subtracted from that. Um, but you should not be paying sales tax at all anyways. Um, construction and remodeling costs. Um, this is why I mentioned on that page where I have grants for uh, from other resources and mentioned capital projects or construction and renovation. Um, LSTA funding, federal funding, cannot be used for doing um, permanent changes to your library building. Um, previously, it was the Library Services Construction Act, but 20, 25 years ago, it got changed to the Technology Act. They decided we're not going to fund construction projects anymore. It's going to be all about technology because that was a big thing that libraries need money for. But there are some notes here on what you can do. Um, and it's what they, they call um, construction light. Basically, if um, it can be done by someone on your staff using their minimal tools and something that can be easily removed, like the drill and screwdriver, I'm putting up this, you know, I'm screwing this security camera into the side of the building and it works on Wi-Fi, that was allowable. Um, but if you need to be um, to hire uh, construction, someone to come in outside contractors or someone from the construction trades, like an electrician or someone to come in and run electricity to make your um, security cameras run at work, that would not be eligible. If you need to run ethernet cords to make have your security cameras be connected to your internet to, to record all that, not eligible. 
things on Wi-Fi, yes, because there's not construction, you're not hiring anyone outside. Um, you cannot hire someone else to do the construction and then have the LSTA grant pay for the actual item. That is that this is just because you're having installation of that and that kind of construction installation done that makes the entire thing unallowable. All right. Um, so you can't get around it that way. Um, so there are ways, there are certain things that you can do that are like, as I described, and this is LSTA's own word in construction light, um, basically. So, um, uh, that's just something to be aware of when you're thinking, you know, submitting your application. Now, if the installation can be its own project and whatever you're um, purchasing is not dependent on the installation, then the items are allowable. We have a lot of people, especially since COVID, during COVID, when, when it started doing out, a lot of outdoor spaces and people are still setting them up because people like the outdoor spaces. If you need to like lay paving or pave over something and then um, to put out um, outdoor furniture, um, you can get an LSTA grant, our library improvement grant for the furniture and the paving um, be paid by something else, that's okay. The furniture doesn't require the paved area, it's nice to have, but it's not needed for the furniture to work, if that makes sense. <laughs> so then that would be eligible. And, and the key to a lot of this is this description here, freestanding movable construction light is allowed. So if it's something you can move around. So if you get shelving in your building, but it's not like attached and built into the walls, freestanding shelving, any furniture inside your building, yes, that's eligible. So the idea is that it's freestanding, easily movable, um, can be removed at some point. Basically like if the, the library, it's not gonna like permanently be attached to the library. That's what makes it not eligible for LSTA. If you're not sure, ask me, <laughs> describe to me what you wanna do and I'll let you know. Um, if you do buy any computers or anything that is in uh, networking equipment or anything, you do need to be SIPA compliant. Uh, so having filters on your computers, basically any federal funding you ever receive, um, if it helps, if it um, gets your users or your staff connected to the internet, you have to be SIPA compliant. Um, uh, oh, good question. And actually, yeah, um, and we do have, where's my SIPA? Yeah, information down here about SIPA. Um, someone just asked, do we need to provide an IMLS internet safety certificate? Yes, and it's built into our application. It is not a separate uh, document that you do. Um, when you will look at the application here a second, there is the internet safety certification is built in as just a box you check off of that. Yes, we do this. So we don't have, we, it used to be a separate piece of paper. There's a lot of paperwork that used to be for this and there isn't anymore. Um, it's all built into the um, application that you submit to us. Um, entertainment, of course, is just, just for general entertainment that's not educational. Giveaways, um, as I already talked about, no built-in furniture. Um, advocacy and lobbying, I can't do that. Social activities, no. Um, PR, promoting things and advertising of general library services. Um, you can't um, receive LSU funding that would do that. So example, if you're gonna get a um, electronic sign outside the building and that's what you want this funding for, um, you have to use that sign to promote LSTA funded things. So other things that might receive funding. So the examples here, just come to the library, it's a great place to learn, no. Come to the library's information literacy program and learn how to search the databases which are provided with LSTA funds. Our Nebraska access databases are funded things we do here, the commissioner funded through LSTA, so then that does count. So you'd have to make sure you're promoting, anything promotion related has to be promoting something that is also LSTA funded, whether it's from this grant or from a previous grant you may have received, or from something we do with the commission. Yeah. Um, you will have to submit um, copies, you'll do the final report, completion report at the end, um, and copies of all final paid invoices. Um, to receive your funding from uh, for this grant, for um, library improvement grant, you only have to submit half of the amount, of, uh, half of the invoices or half of the total amount of the grant in invoices to receive your funding. So you'll get approved for the grant, you'll start purchasing things. Once you've purchased, you know, depending on how it goes, at least half, send me those invoices, half of the amount, and then I'll issue your grant funds. And then you have that reimbursed and then for the rest of what you're buying. 
Um, afterwards, um, you can do purchase orders if um, just to get that funding initially dispersed to you. So just saying, here's our order form when we did buy this, but we haven't paid it yet, that's okay. Um, but you will have to provide final paid invoices, things that say yes, that show me that you actually paid for the thing in the end um, as your final paperwork. Um, this does require also a local match of 25% of the total project amount. Um, so this is a matching grant. Um, at least 10% of that must be cash money, either from the library, from your foundation, from donations, any way um, that you earn um, raise funding is perfectly fine. Um, and then the remaining 15% can be in kind. So like um, we're talking uh, the person who's hired to run the program that we're putting on, that salary would be fine. This is not to pay your basic salary for your staff, no. It, it can't be used for that, but if you're like hiring a performer to come on and do a presentation or something, that would be the call in kind. Um, if you have something really expensive that you're purchasing, something that the initial cost for it is the uh, for one item is over $5,000, you have to get pre-approval. We have to get pre-approval from IMLS, so you have to get it from us. So before we can approve anything that's really expensive. And um, this has generally get, been things like big furniture purchases, um, on, like reshelving the whole library, um, Glowforge, um, 3D printer type things. A lot of those sometimes cross that $5,000 mark. Uh, we already talked about SIPA. Um, just some basic things you need to comply with. Something new, this is for federal funding. You must have a um, unique entity identifier through, uh, through the SAM.gov website. This is for any federal funding you receive. If you've done any grants from us before through library improvement in the last year or other funding, you've already got one of these, but um, you can very easily get one of those um, from SAM. You'll, you'll put that in your grant application. Um, and here is the application for library improvement grants. Is um, um, as I said, it shows it says you pick which LSTA purpose you're you're um, applying for, and then just explain what you're doing. Um, this is all LSTA required things that match up with when we have to report to them what the funding was used for. Um, so whether it was lifelong learning, information access, et cetera, et cetera. What activities you might be doing? Is it just purchasing things? Is it a design, development, assessment, operations, um, instruction, whatever you're doing? Who it's going to benefit? Um, how you're going to do the project? Um, what are your outcomes? What do you want to have? What's going to come? What's going to be the end result of doing this? How are you going to um, determine if it did work? And then there is your project budget here. Um, so it's broken down by each of the different um, items that we have to report to IMLS. So you would say how much you're requesting, how much your local funds would be, and then it'll total it all up for you. And then for all of these things that you are listing here and all the things you want, we want a detail of exactly what you're get, wanting. So if you want to upgrade your computers, you're going to say in here, um, you're going to look up the computer model, make um, the specs and say we're, we're purchasing we want to purchase three new pcs they're going to be dell with this memory this whatever um this printer from this brand and, and how much each thing costs and the computers each cost this much per the printer costs this much the scanner costs this much um you're going to detail in here um what um everything is that you're going to purchase um, this is where you say if you're compliance with SIPA, if you're buying, some, if you want to purchase something that's internet related, and then all of the other things that you just have to agree to here are all just um, listed, so you can read through these if you want to. But this is just all the things that we have to, because it's federal funding, we have to agree to them and you have to agree to them, so that we just list them all here. And then by um, signing and submitting the application, you're agreeing to follow all of those. Um, and then you would just submit the application. Nothing else needs to be submitted ahead of time, um, unless uh, if some of these fields, sometimes um, you can't fill it in or you wanna write up something separate, you can send me a separate document with information or screenshots of what you're gonna purchase or something, that's perfectly fine, you can do that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I got a question here. Oh, okay, yes. Um, someone wants to know, okay. would um, all equipment of the unit cost over $5,000 must be approved apply when you're requesting four workstations to each under 4,000, but when purchased together, they exceed 5,000? No, it's unit cost is the, is the key. 
is that if one item costs 5,000, so um, unit costs. So if, hopefully you don't have a computer. If you are buying a computer that cost over five, the one computer costs over 5,000, then it must be pre-approved by MLS, which is basically just, you have to tell us, what, you know, explain to us what it, why, what it is, and then we ask them, and then they get back to us and say yes or no um, to it. So no, each, if an individual item is its own cost is 5,000, not together. So your whole grant can be for like, you know, five computers, that end up costing, um, um, you know, seven thousand dollars or something. That's okay because each individual computer does not cost five thousand. So this is a individual items cost is five thousand, not everything together. All right, so that is our um, library improvement grants. Does anybody have any other any questions? Any other questions about library improvement grants? About what you can apply for, what you can't? Any uh, um, wondering if there's something that would be eligible or not right now? All right, so, um, and you can see here, um, uh, as I said, our 2024 grants are wrapping up. So if you're curious about uh, what that completion report would look like for you, you can look at the 2024 one. This, this is for libraries who are wrapping it up. Uh, basically matches up with uh, what you did in your application, but then you've got to explain your outcomes and what happened and your evaluation of it and, and everything. So you can look at the current, um, completion report, but that's not the one for you because that's 2024. Yours will become available next year when you're wrapping things up. Ah, okay. A question came in that might relate to um, you more, Sally, since we're going on to the youth grants. So let's go on to the youth grants for excellence. This is the one that Sally is in charge of. Um, so here you go, Sally, go ahead and uh, talk about your grants. Thank you. Um, you'll hear some things again that, that Krista said, but maybe phrased in a slightly different way. And you'll hear some things that I am not going to fund that she can fund. So we'll try and keep all of this straight. The first thing I wanna say is people always ask, um, the youth grants do not fund computers or things, but if you have a project, and, it, and a lot of your project fits in the youth grant area, you can apply for a youth grant, and then you can also apply for a library improvement grant to buy the computers mm -hmm. that, that would help with this project. So don't think you're just stuck with, well, I can't get computers, so I can't do it. And we do talk to each other about, hey, we have this grant, do you have that grant? Okay, applications, yes. yes. Then we talk later, are you funding this one? Are you funding that one? And it's yes or no, and then we, because we're not going to fund one half of the project and not fund the other half of the project. Right, right. Probably. So we do, yeah, uh, we've done that before with various things like also um, someone did some sort of a makerspace thing for specifically for teens or youth and they got the equipment for the makerspace from the youth grant and then they bought a cabinet um, through library improvement grant to hold all the stuff. So you can do so you can apply for multiple grants and possibly be funded for multiple grants depending on if they are connected and even if they're not connected you might receive more than one too yeah good point so now we'll go back to the main page that krista clicked us to this is just a general explanation as to how the youth grants are um, pulled together and how they function so we scroll down a little bit and you'll see that again it's accredited public libraries or identified institutional libraries are the app the applicants for this grant you can partner with a neighboring unaccredited library or a neighboring school library as a partner in this project um, yep. maybe you're going to buy steam kits and you want to have um, x number of steam kits and the school wants to use them too now they could just check them out from your library that's true but if you want to have a, a joint project our requirement is that after the items are purchased 
at least 51% of the items need to reside in the public library. They need to be part of that public library collection. The school can still borrow them and use them some of the time. And you can borrow from the school if they have some residing in the school, but that's a way that you can get a school library in your community and your library, both getting some more of STEAM kits or whatever it is you're looking for to, to help improve children's abilities and skills and interests and fun and um, things like that. So think about partnering if you want to. Mm -hmm. And that goes to library improvement grants too. I think I didn't mention it for that one. Partnering is encouraged for that as well. Okay, great. Not one of the eligible ones, partner with someone, yeah. So again, due dates and things are there. But, and then the application guidelines, what is required? Well, when we look at the grants, you'll see, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the application itself in a minute, where things go, because sometimes it's confusing. My phraseology may need some more improvement. So send me suggestions if you want to. Um, we First, we wanna know a, a brief statement about the need for the project. Have parents and kids come in saying, we want steam kits. They're not gonna call them that, of course. They're gonna say, we want robots. We want other, whatever the other words are. Ozobots, I can't remember. <laughs> anyway. Yep, that's one, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also you might look at um, what are, what's some, re do a little research. What can support your idea? If it's from the parents, that's great. If it's just you thinking, you know what kids would, I bet they'd enjoy is this. Let's look and see what's been going on in the world of libraries. And you can pull some things out of articles or studies, things like that. You don't have to. I don't want to make it too hard for everybody, but if you want to, you can pull some things in about that. Another requirement about the youth grants is each grant project must have at least one program. And by that, I mean an event designed for the project, attended by youth, usually held at the library, might be held somewhere else for, you know, in the park or something for other reasons. It's for the youth of your community to attend because um, we want to have at least one program. Lots of people, if they're buying something that really isn't as um, as well designed for kids to come in and play with it all together, you might give an open house to have people come in. If it's a preschool, you can invite local preschools to come in. If it's teens, you can invite teens and families to come in and see, here's what we have and we're going to be using them. We're going to have these these programs during the the summer, however you're doing it. So people can know about it and hopefully attend your programs. And then of course, we'll go through some of the other things here as we look at the application. But there are some questions, always I get questions about, well, what kind of projects can it be? So I have this general list of types of things you might be considering. It's certainly not inclusive. There's all kinds of things you could hear about another library doing going, wow, I think that would work in my library. And um, speaking of which, there are exemplary sample applications that you can look at to see not only what projects they were doing, but how they wrote their application. Mm -hmm. And that might be a hint towards how they got funded. Some of these are, have an older form on them, the, the older applications, but it's just still the same idea. Yeah. My biggest issue is to please give us details you're not locked in to what you say you're going to do that's mm -hmm. i think that's that makes people be more general we're going to have four programs in the summer and we'll probably have this or that okay great but if you give me more details here's what we're thinking we're going to have this program on stem kits and this program on um, making comic books and this program on writing what you can have, they can be related, they cannot be related, it doesn't matter as long as you think that these are things kids and teens in your community will come in for. So mm -hmm. if you if you list out a little bit more information about the programs and what they're going to be, that will give you a boost up in being considered for funding. And mm -hmm. again, if you want to make well, sure you thought this through pretty, pretty in pretty good detail that you've really not just kind of thrown together oh we'll do something steam because that's what everyone's doing and you know we want you well, what are you specifically going to do you want to make sure you've thought this through as an actual project that you would do and that you've really put some good um you know 
discussion into it amongst your staff or, or like Alex said, research on what kind of things do would work for this that we want to do. Or you've talked with the teens in your community and they want to do comic books mm -hmm. or you know graphic novels or whatever. How would you do and that? And I know you've thought about it. You've talked with the teens or you've talked with the parents about the STEAM kids or whoever. And here's your idea. Now, oh. when it comes after funding and you go to look and buy this STEAM kit you said you were going to buy and it's not available anymore, don't panic. That's okay. okay. Um, find something else that'll work close to what you wanted mm -hmm. email me and say steam kit blah blah isn't available but they have that this thing will be will work this way so we're going to go with that is that okay and i'll say yes thanks for asking yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not in stone we know when you're submitting these applications now and then you're buying these things like six months down the road definitely things are going to change things like i said might not be available you might find something better um or costs may have changed i've had that happen with the library improvement grant someone said oh this thing costs this much so that's this much of a grant and then six months later oh well now it's like 300 dollars cheaper and we have 300 dollars extra on our grant money what do we do reach out to me and say well buy something else what else can you come up with you can add things on later afterwards it's okay don't yeah. send us back the money please don't say that's the thing for all these grants we don't want the money back figure out a way to spend it <laughs> and just ask say hey here's an idea you know, we bought this much furniture for outdoor patio but it was cheaper than i thought can i buy some more furniture absolutely yes <laughs> and as long as whatever you want to do instead sometimes they say instead of the steam kits we're going to go with i can't think of anything to fit in with that because i don't i'm not that good on extemporaneous speaker but instead of steam kits we're going to do this is that okay as long as it's part of the general purpose of your grant i will say yes if you say well we can't do steam kits so we're going to take the kids to the zoo no <laughs> that's a little too and different i think it would be nice if you could but that's not part of the grant you application you send in in the first place so we're going to have to say um think some more about what you can do i wouldn't i wouldn't just shout out no <laughs> um, again, there are the matching funds that Krista talked about in the same way, local match of 25% with at least 10% of that being cash, as she described. Now we get down here to, to the ineligible costs. Of course, it's always food and beverages. And for the youth grants, the purchase of furniture, that's why the application like last year sent their cabinet to keep the things into mm -hmm. library improvement grants and, and the actual items from us, from the youth grants. Also, um, no general collection development. If you say, I need to improve my um, nonfiction for elementary school, I'm sorry, we won't be funding that. If you have a project that has a nonfiction element with it, like a one, a one application had information about biographies and, and, and they had activities involving the biographies, and they wanted to improve their bio biography collection by so much. Yes, that could be funded because it was specific to that topic that they were doing. So they did get some books to improve their collection. So they be related buy. to the project or program that you're gonna be doing, right. then you can buy books for it, yes. yes. Also, the AWE workstations or other such uh, similar stations we are not funding right now. And in general, the purchase of computer equipment is not allowed, except in the case of the program won't work without one. Like if you're getting a 3D printer, the only and it requires a laptop to make it run. Yep. And then yes, that laptop to go with the 3D printer would be eligible mm -hmm. because you can't do that project without it. So right. we don't want to make life hard for you. Yeah. And someone did ask about the these workstations, the AW ones. Um, that would be something. So you, since it is, it is something children's and youth related, but we're not funding them through youth grants. You could do a library improvement grant for those instead. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if you it's want computers in, like, if you have a, if you have computers that are your separate, your youth and teen computers, and then these are your adult computers, then you want to buy computers for the youth and teen area. That would be a library improvement grant application that you would apply for, not a youth grant one. Sounds like it should be youth because it is, but because of the way the rules are for doing computers, you just pop it over to the library improvement. Because Krista will consider your application. She won't say that's a youth grant. No, no. <laughs> she does. She's not a mean person. <laughs> 
So then you scroll down a little bit and the 2025 completion report is already up on my page. How did mm -hmm. that happen? I, but I just, yeah, we need to, anyway. So if you want to look at that to see what are we asking you to tell us about, it's always helpful to do that early on after you hear, oh, I got the grant. Wonder what I have to keep track of mm -hmm. now before I have do the whole program and then go, oh, I didn't know I should count that. Although I don't think it's too complicated. If we click on the Youth Grant for Excellence 2025 application, we'll just run through this fairly quickly. It's pretty obvious for the most part. Your name, the library's name, who you are, are you the children's librarian or the director, whatever. Now this number one, summary of grant project. I might have to rephrase that, but really what I wanna know is, how'd you decide to do this? What is it and how'd you decide to do it? So oh, there's that project title up there and people come up with some great titles. I can't, I can't, don't have an example right now, but it could be steam kits for, for kindergartners. I think there are such things. And then sure. you can, under the summary, you can say, we're gonna buy this, we're gonna buy some steam kits because parents are asking us to have this for their children, their kindergartners, so they can be prepared to learn more in school. And maybe as you get along and get more items in your library, we can learn from that too. Just some general, it doesn't have to be very long. Although these boxes do expand as you talk, as you mm -hmm. type in there. Oh, by the way, don't type in here <laughs> until you have it all figured out. Because once you start in here, if you leave, it all disappears. Yeah, it does not save true. as you go and you can come back. Yeah, type something so, up in your, in a, same thing for the other grants too, anything that has something long you have to input, um, write it up on a Word document or something else elsewhere, and then just copy and paste those big uh, Save yourself pain and torture. Yeah. <laughs> Next are the goals of the program. So you need one or two. Sometimes I get eight and you don't don't work that hard. Eight's great. If you have eight goals, that's fine. Put them in there, but one or two is plenty enough. So whatever your goals are, your hope you are going to achieve, write that in there. Then we come to the meat of the application, description of program or activities. Here's where you tell me what you have in mind. And oh, by the way, it's not just me. I have a team of people here who look at the grants. So um, sometimes they outvote me. <laughs> so you put in there, um, I, I wanna have four STEAM programs for the summer in doing it in June or whatever you're doing. And this is program one will be doing this. Uh, week one, week two will be doing that. and and. And again, like we said, you're not locked in. We hope that it works that way because you've done some planning, but if it doesn't work that way, you can email me and say, so instead we're gonna, we're gonna have these programs with STEAM, but it's gonna be this stuff instead of that stuff. And a detailed timeline for completion, kind of think of those programs up there. All right, so first you're gonna buy some stuff, then you're gonna, uh, advertise your programs because you've already got it all planned because you already did number three you know when your programs are and what they're going to be and then you say when you know june 1st is this june 7th is that and then um identify a youth service need on which this project is based here again you can say parents have been asking us to do this because they want our kids to learn coding and mm. they, they haven't shown enough ability in this area we want them to get better use service need and then this plans for time we know that um mm. you're busy all the time to everybody if, if you have a children's library and she she or he is busy the library directors are busy but generally what people put in here is every summer we have four programs in june and this summer is going to be this with these steam kits. And um, so we already have staff lined up to do these programs. Or um, the lady from the school who does this all the time has agreed to come in for free and do these programs to help us help kids learn more fun stuff. Oh yes. And then the means of evaluation, we always ask this. 
we we know you're going to count people because we do that. We count who, how many kids attended the program, um, how many um, items were checked out, things like that. Yes, but also think about what what outcome was there with the kids? Do they did they get excited about things, or, or did they have a change change in attitude or behavior? Did they come in going, "Yeah, this will be," new. and they go, "Wow, this was really great. I think coding is terrific." For example, because <laughs> Kids are all going to say that, right? Yes, I live in a fantasy world. Anyway, um, so put in there what you think you're going to be doing. So you might be talking to the parents, or you might be talking to the kids, depending on if they're preschool or teens, and um, let us know what what your plan is for that. There, and then your approximate date to begin the project. Most people put down January second. That's fine. And here's the scary one. If awarded a grant, I would be willing, if asked, to make a presentation at a state or system youth event or via teleconference. Teleconference is still in there. I should I say webinar? Sorry. That's kind of scary. But if you click no, you are not automatically dropped. I'm just asking you if we pull, a, like, say we want four librarians to talk about their grants and what their activities were for one Encompass Live, you'd only have 15 minutes. It won't be that long and then you'll be done and yay. Mm -hmm. People hear about your project and how it went. So that's why we ask that. And I go through and I can say, oh, someone said yes. <laughs> now, my budget looks a little different from the one Krista showed you, but here's, here's the general category of things. So contracted services are, I'm hiring a storyteller to come and teach kids how to tell stories. That's not a, a library a library employee. That goes in there. What do you think they're going to charge? $300? No. Library materials are, of course, things that you add to your collection, be they um, steam kits or books or other project things. Personnel costs is only used if you need it for your local in-kind match for uh, you could count the children's librarians' time with this particular project, not just their time in general, but here's how much time they spent on this project. Um, they spent 20 hours at X, $10 an hour. That's too cheap, I know. And so it was this much money for our local match. They were paid their salary to do that. Program material supplies, those are things like, you know, they're going to get used up. Paper, thread for the 3D um, printer things like that. If you need any training and how to use these steam kits or something, you can put that in there. Equipment is um, like the 3D printer or other things along that line. We don't get equipment very much with the youth grants because it's more usually mm. um, use, up, use up, you know, using the supplies and things like that. Promotion, if you're going to do something beyond, put it on our Facebook page. And the famous other, because I can't think of any other category. And sometimes <laughs> someone asks for something, and where do I put this? Use so other. All in there, yeah. yeah. So then there's the, so add that all up. Well, actually, this adds it all up, I think. And put it in the estimate, the total project budget. There's your total. So say it's $1,000 there. Then the amount being requested as a grant from the Library Commission will be 75% of that total budget amount. $750. It, I don't know if it pops in there or not. I can't remember. Then your cash match and your local match in kind should total the other $250 to make the $1,000 the $1, amount. In mine, I have boxes for everything because I wasn't getting a good enough explanation as to what people were doing. So up here, you say contracted service to storyteller. Down here is where you tell me we're hiring Brian Henning to teach kids how to tell stories and he's charging x amount of dollars library materials we're buying four books about legos because we're having the legos um, project when we want some books for it and then again the personnel costs supplies and things just tell me what it is how did you come up with that estimate of a hundred dollars for program materials we need this many rolls of thread for the 3d printer or we're going to be doing um, making graphic novels or comic books. So we need this kind of paper, that kind of thing. 
whatever you want in there and tell us approximately what you think it'll cost. So you go down to the bottom and there's the only other thing you need to do is put your, when you put your names in here, you are authorizing the person who wrote up this application and saying, yes, we know this application's going in. That's the only, we don't need a separate signature page anymore for these. Mm -hmm. So just put that in there and then save and submit the application. Oh, and if you click that and your math is wrong, it isn't gonna send. It'll say, it'll pop you back up and say, this doesn't work. Fix your That's math. I get home call saying, I it won't let me send. And I try to help you through that because Sometimes it's confusing. Every once in a while, there's this decimal point that gives us trouble because we say up here at the top. It should sorry, say um, round to the nearest whole dollar. Do not do pennies or cents or whatever, yeah. Yes. And yes, things are gonna cost $12.17 and just put in 12. Yeah. I know um, that's someone does have a question wanting to know, are light box tables okay? That would be equipment, oh, right? I didn't hear that. Are light box tables? Oh, ooh, that's a good question. I and that would know. be equipment, right? Yeah, or, yeah. I, you know, is it is it furniture or is it equipment? Because it's not just a table. A table is furniture, but a light box table, I think that it's could be equipment. Different. Yeah. In which case, offhand, I would say yes, it would be eligible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you need an extra table, then that's going to have to come either from. Well, library. that's the other thing I was going to say. I often tell people when they need a table or or something like that, that can be part of your local match. You can buy the table out of your local funds. Mm -hmm. Send me the receipt because I've got to see not only that you spent the grant money, but that you spent the local match amount too, and say you know. Because your local match can be all cash. It doesn't have to have any in-kind. That's just there for people who don't have the cash available to spend. So right. you can put it yeah. in there and say you have a $100 table and, and something else, then you're good. Yeah, they describe the light, light table is like um, a play table. You can do craft programs with it. Cool. Yeah. So let's call that equipment. Are you okay with that, Krista? Yeah, sounds like it to me. Yeah, because it's not just a, a plain old table. Yeah. Yeah. Good questions. Yeah. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And um, as you're filling out, as you're looking at this and filling out the, the budget form, proposed budget project, project budget form, and you have questions about where things go, Again, I'm not going to get upset if you put something in other that should have been under this or that. That's fine. We understand this because you've explained it down below. Other is, you know, Brian Henning coming to give um, a workshop and you didn't put it under contracted services. We're not going to throw out your application. Mm -hmm. Someone wants us to explain what in kind means. And I, I know you have. Okay. This description here, that is some things, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what that says exactly. Oh, there it is. Uh, In-kind costs. Um, yeah. So your staffing resources. So um, what you were talking about, the... Um, There's the also salary. things like um, printing so something up to have for either brochures to advertise it, or here's the things that we have to have for this um, comic book session, so we need this page with the different spots in it for the art and the balloons for the comment or the dialogue. And we can't just hand them a piece of paper and say, here, do this. If you don't, I mean, you can, but you want to buy something more designed mm -hmm. for comics, then you can put that as the library bought so these in kind would be so so for these grants this one in the library improvement you have a 25 percent match so you can say like the total project cost is the total cost to do the whole project um
is the full amount and then 25% of that must be something that you put up and it can be all cash but in kind would be things that maybe aren't eligible for this grant like like you're saying the furniture a table to use to do this project you can't do general furniture for this but you could get that from somewhere else and you can say okay this table cost us this amount so um or if someone donating their time to do the printing of the brochures they could say okay, okay we're, or it's um that would be in kind um so things that you need to do to make this project work but aren't eligible for this grant yeah <laughs> Good point. Good way to put it. Yes. It is a little no, you know, there's, you know, there's things you can and can't, things that are ineligible. So furniture, food and beverages. If you do want to provide snacks at a event. Yes, those. And kids and teens love to have snacks. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, if someone donated products, could those be included as in kind? Yes. Yeah. Someone helping you. Yeah. So it doesn't have to all be money that the library comes up with. You have someone I says, I will donate the filament for the 3D printer for this pro program that you're doing. Then that could be your in kind. And you also might have a grant from a local entity in your near your community who's giving you sure. the $250 if you have a thousand dollar total project the $250 for this grant because they think this is a good project we'll just give you a grant for 250 and that can as as long as it's not a state funded I don't know can't mm -hmm. come from state money I think but otherwise if that's their local or other other foundations or businesses or something that might give you money towards the program yeah that could that would be the um that would help that would be part of your cash match. You've gotten that from someone else, and you can say yes. We've got, we already got this company that's going to help us do this program, but we need more money to make the whole thing work. Yeah. Um, and we all, I will also say too that for both, um, for all of our grants except for the internship, um, we do do sometimes partial grants meaning you may ask for and this is just a general example for math purposes you may say we're asking for a thousand dollars and we'll say we'll give you 500. Um, we do have a limited budgets for all of our grant programs so um, sometimes we can't fully fund exact everything you've asked for so we will do partial grants um, so you may get a response from us in december saying okay we, we you know, we've got your grant application we love it but we only have enough to give you half the money that doesn't mean you can't do the program, possibly. That is something you can now use to apply for other grants sometimes. Um, just like Sally was saying, if we hear that you've got some other business, local business hub that wants to support this program, that is kind of gives you an up on receiving our grant the other way as well. Hey, the state of Nebraska gave us $500 for this project, but we need another 500. You can take now our grant approval to these other organizations and entities and say, look, we're halfway there. Can you provide the rest of the funding? And it shows that the state is supportive of your program and your project and your library. And that will definitely give you points to them, I would think, on getting other funding. So um, we do do partial grants. So um, we try to try to do our best to give everyone something. Sometimes we run out of funding. <laughs> um, we are we do have a limit on all of our how much how much we have. Um, so sometimes we give a full or sometimes we'll give a partial to at least help somewhat. Yes. Another thing I get asked a lot is um, for for youth grants is I want to do this project for preschool and I want to do this project for tweens. So they're obviously not the same projects. Should mm -hmm. I write two applications or put them both in one? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Either way, I would suggest put them in one because then you only have one, writing out one grant application. So project one is working with preschool for this. Project mm -hmm. two is working with tweens for that. And again, we might fund the whole thing. We might fund, we might say we're only funding the, the preschool one. We don't usually say that because usually we say we're giving you five hundred dollars divided up how you want, um, unless we think yeah you can't do the one without the full funding. Mm -hmm. But mostly we say it's up to the librarians to decide how they how they want to use the funding. Yes, yes. Oh, we don't have an answer to that. Okay. All right. Let me get back to our main page here uh all right so yeah we have gone over our time sorry about that um but we the whole thing is recorded so if anyone had to leave we do have a full recording for everyone this, this session usually does go a little longer than usual because there's a lot to talk about and a lot of great questions coming in um 
Does anybody have any, I, I do just see another question came in, I'm going to answer definitely, but anybody have any other questions they want to ask of us right now, go ahead and type into the question section. Um, just uh, for general purposes here, um, CE and training grants, that's Holly, if you have any questions about that. Internship and library improvement, that's me. You can email or ask me questions. And youth grants for excellence, of course, is Sally. Um, so type in any other questions you have that you want us to answer right now. Um, let's see, this one that came in. And generally, how much funding will you provide for an individual individual grant application? No, we do not have an answer for that. It varies. <laughs> um, we have, if you look at, uh, there's no, um, what we say, and I think this is something that I've mentioned before, just ask for what you want, what you need, um, and then we'll figure out what we can give. <laughs> Um, that we that we don't want you to try and limit your grant to say, oh, well, they only can give this much out per, per library. We don't do it that way. Um, our grants will range from, um, we used to have a minimum, but we don't anymore, from like giving a library $200, $300. Um, we've given up to $25,000 and, and, and even more. Um, this is just a general thing on library improvement grants for like a digitization project. Um, and it's just, there's no, we don't have any rules about how much every library gets. Um, I say, ask for what you want and we'll see what we can do. And it's just all gonna depend on what else other grant applications we get. And, don't, um, and think your application, don't think your application is too small. I need $150 to do this project. No, no okay. application is too small. I mean, you have to write up the same application for it, but other than that, um, we're not gonna say, well, that's not worth our time, no. You have a project you want to do with your library, so yes, give us a try. I mean, here's just, I just did a search for library improvement grants we've given out. Here's one that was 1,400, and then this one was 8,000, 3,500. It's, yeah. yeah, there is no, this one was 9,000. It's, yeah. <laughs> we'll do Mine what we- that much usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. So, um, just tell us what your project is, how much you think it's going to cost, and we'll, we'll um, see what happens. Yeah. All right. Um, we got some thank yous coming in. Thank you. Have a great day. Great presentation. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us. Yeah. Uh, any other last minute desperate questions or anything last minute from Sally or Holly? All right. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you. Apply for the grants. They're all open. We're looking for your applications. Um, deadline is November 15th. So you have a couple of months here to come up with a project idea, a program, <clears throat> and get your application into us. We'll look, be looking forward to us. If you have any questions, reach out to us ahead of time um, and we will answer them for you before you submit your application. And even afterwards, things can be changed. Nothing in stone. Um, all right. So this session has been recorded. And let's pop over here to our main Encompass Live page. We have our archives here. These are our upcoming shows, our show archives. Um, today's show will be here at the top of the page eh, by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. Um, you'll all be notified, everyone who attended and registered for today's show will be notified when your recording is available. And it will also be posted up to our, um, up to our social media. We do have, you can see here, a um, Facebook page, there it is, <laughs> for Encompass Live. We push out to um, there when our recording is available. Here's this reminder about today's show. And here's one about the recording from the last one. So it'll be put out here as well. We use the hashtag Encump Live in any of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. So you can look for that as well. If you do like to use Facebook, give us a like. Um, or you can follow the Library Commission's um, Twitter or Instagram to see notifications about what's happening. Um, you can search our show archives here for anything you might be interested in. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months. Um, that's because this is our full show archives going back to January 2009 when the, commission, when the Encompass Live first premiered. If you watch something old, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. Some things will become, will be great, stand the test of time, be good to watch. Some things will become old and outdated. 
Um, resources and services may have changed, links might not work. People may work at a different library or institution than when they permit, presented for us. Um, but just so pay attention to that when you're watching any of our old shows. But um, we host all of these on our Nebraska Library Commission YouTube channel. And just like what libraries do, we do keep things for historical purposes. So as long as we have a place to host them, we will always have them all up for you to watch. Um, Sally mentioned presenting at um, other, are you presenting on Encompass Live? Something I wanted to mention, and I, Big talk from small libraries. This is a, session, a, a conference that we do at the end of February every year that you could present at if you did want to about anything you've done, um, anything you've gotten uh, um, uh, grant for from us, among other things. The call for speakers is open. Uh, our presenters are generally, this is a um, big talk from small libraries. We try to have all of our presenters be from libraries who are with an FTE or population served of 10,000 or less. So this is for the little the little people, the little guys, the little libraries. Um, we are. Um, this is done through the Library Commission and the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. Um, deadline to submit your uh, presentation is uh, proposal is December 13th. So if you are interested in presenting on anything you've got a grant for or anything you might be doing at your library, submit a proposal to me and we'll see if we can get you on the schedule for our um, next year's conference. It is on Friday, February 28th. It's done totally online, just like what we're doing here today. So you'll just be presenting online from your library. This is not an in-person event. This is an, um, a thoroughly online event. So please do um, submit that. All right, and then we've got our upcoming shows here. Next week is our Pretty Sweet Tech. Now, usually Pretty Sweet Tech is always the last Wednesday of the month, but um, this week, um, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, is off at um, at a event for work, so she was unable to do it today. So we bumped her to next week. So next week is actually her Pretty Sweet Tech for September in October. <laughs> um, she's going to be talking about digital navigators and digital equity in Nebraska. Uh, something very important, a lot of work going on with that in Nebraska, so please do sign up for that next week. She'll also be back at the end of the month in October 30th um, to do another session, her regular October 1. Note, the week after that, we do not have an Encompass Live. We always take off the week of the um, Nebraska Library Association Conference. So um, the conference will be happening um, that week, October 9th through 11th in Kearney, so we'll be skipping that week of Encompass Live. Then you can see we've got all the other sessions coming up. All right, that wraps it up for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thanks, Holly and Sally, for talking about our grants. And um, go out, apply. We have money. We want to give it away. So ask us for it. <laughs> all right, thank you, everybody. Hope to see thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.